12.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Saving Time the 11th of March 2018 by Daniel Feinberg It's no slight to the actual quality of Stars' upcoming Vita to say that my favorite thing about Vita is how absolutely bizarre it is that this series is on Stars at all. Set to launch on Stars on May 6, but getting an early premiere at South by Southwest, Vita hails from a relatively unproven showrunner, Tanya Saracho, features a cast of variably underknown Latinx actors actors, unfolds heavily in Spanglish and is unquestionably a half-hour drama. Granted that Stars has been trying to push into the Spanish language marketplace for years and that the girlfriend experience is absolutely one of the rare half-hour dramas on TV, Vita's a show that doesn't really feel like anything the network has ever aired. Vita focuses on grown-up sisters Emma, Michelle Prada, and Lynn, Melissa Pereira, who return to their East Los Angeles home after the death of their mother. Long estranged from both their mother and each other, Emma and Lynn are hoping to make a quick funeral appearance, sell their mother's struggling bar and leave. Things get immediately more complicated when they meet their mother's roommate Eddie, Karen Esaranza Tegu, and are forced to confront a secret that'll be immediately obvious to audiences but takes Eddie and Lynn by surprise. The secret forces the two young women to examine their upbringing, while they also reunite with people from their past and confront their neighborhood's changing cultural landscape, a run amok climate of gentrification that indignantly woke vlogger Marisol, Chelsea Rendon, is fighting against. There's no inherent reason why Vita has been structured in the half-hour format and the first two episodes form what is a traditional hour-long pilot and probably should be aired as such, in case Stars is still considering premiere plans. Emma and Lynn are damaged and prickly and unapologetic characters and the difference in affection I felt for them after two episodes versus after the first 30 minutes was large. That extra time makes Lynn's mixture of naivete and sexual self-destructiveness make sense and exposes which aspects of Emma's cynicism and apparent prejudices are a well-earned defense mechanism. Ferreira, a Mexican actress whose credits include several telenovelas and Netflix's Club de Cuervos, and Prada, whom I vaguely remember from Fear the Walking Dead, have comic moments, Prada with sarcastic scorn and Barrera with a bubbly innocence she can turn on and off, and the series' early episodes feature a couple abrupt sex scenes meant to play partially as funny, but you never really get fooled into thinking that Vita's aiming for humor as its primary tone. The slightly cartoonish gringos, hipsters and neighborhood interlopers, hint, anybody vapping is probably evil, are as close as the show comes to selling out for humor, but none are so central as to be distractingly one-dimensional. Instead, directors Alonzo Ruiz Palacios and So Young Kim strike a chord of authenticity that you'd probably expect to see in a movie playing at Sundance more than on the network behind Ash vs. Evil Dead or that thing where Patrick Stewart yelled a lot. The East LA filming is grounded and emphasizes little details, a post-funeral repast table covered in different types of flan or the horizontal, gentry fences that anger Marisol, over broad stroke celebrations of Mexican-American culture. Nobody shies from acknowledging and depicting that parts of this neighborhood are run down, but it beats the alternative in which everything has become plastic. The show is definitely more adventurous in theme and subject matter than visual storytelling. The scripts by Saracho, with Santa Sierra Co. writing the second episode, don't pander by subtitling the hybrid language detours, though everybody feels like they may be talking just a little slowly to make sure the monolingual can keep up. Without piling on our current president and the impact he's having on largely immigrant areas, Vita shows the vulnerability of this community from without and the fractures from within, with a particular emphasis on how different generations respond to gay and queer issues and to female independence. In addition to Barrera and Prada, the early Vita standout performance comes from Anza Tegu, who is another reason stars should plan on airing a full hour to start with. It's hard to get an early read on Eddie and a lot of things I read as wooden from Anza Tegu in the first episode become much more clearly a product of the character's sadness. The last scene of the second episode, basically setting up the series to come, proved surprisingly moving due to those three actresses. I hope that several of the thinner supporting characters also improve given more time. Vita is off-brand for stars, but other than maybe Showtime, which could pair it with a far more polished Smilf, I don't know what network would make a show like this. The factors that make Vita unique are exactly the sort of things that simultaneously terrify most networks and yet should be much, much more frequent in a landscape in which with 500-ish scripted shows, doing what the other guys aren't doing should be smart business. Cast, Melissa Pereira, Michelle Prada, Karen S. Aranzatego, Chelsea Rendon, Carlos Miranda, Maria Elena Laws, creator, Tanya Saracho premieres May 6th on Stars.